Hello, and welcome to the ordeal. Happy COVID-19. I hope you are all safe, and all of your loved ones are safe. Take care of yourselves. Um, distance yourself from other people, and uh, make sure that you're taking proper hygiene precautions. I want to talk about this article here, because, as you know, if you've been watching my channel at all, I'm not so much for the feminazis. So let's see what this one this particular one has to say. The coronavirus is a disaster for feminism. Pandemics affect men and women differently. Wonder why that is. Hmm, maybe it's because um, men and women are different and should be treated different and don't need to have, like, economic equality. Men and women should be, of course, of equal value as human beings. But that doesn't mean that they should have economic value that, that is equal. Women have a place and men have a place, and we should honor that and respect that and treat it each other as such. Enough already. When people try to be cheerful about social distancing and working from home, noting that William Shakespeare and Isaac Newton did some of their best work while England was ravaged by plague, there's an obvious response. Neither of them had child care responsibilities. Yeah. First off, Newton never got married. Never even had sex. Um, and it was easy. Help was inexpensive back then. It was easy to, to hire somebody to be a nanny. It's easy to hire somebody to be a babysitter. Um, they're also probably not as interested in having child care responsibilities as their spouses were, or the women that they had had sex with. Their baby, their baby mama, basically. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, they didn't have to do that, and, and the women at the time perhaps didn't have jobs. These were these were well respected men in their fields. So they could have had a woman who stayed at home and raised the children. This happens today. I knew a woman. I worked with a woman, very attractive woman, who one day, hey, some rich dude set came along and said, Hey, you never have to work again. We might be my wife and she said, Okay. As far as I know she she never worked again, but either way, I mean she was living on Easy Street from that point. On uh, so you act like this is a bad thing. That that they were that these men were allowed to focus on uh, their personal projects while their wives took care of the children. Did the did the what women not have any say in whether or not they raised the children? Well, I mean, what did they just, Oh, I, I'm pregnant. Damn it! How did that happen? Or oh, you're going to get me pregnant? You're going to force it on me? That's illegal. It's always been illegal. So calm down. Shakespeare spent most of his career in London, where. The theaters were, while well, his family lived in Stratford on upon Avon during the 1606 plague. So he was lucky to be spared from the epidemic. His landlady died at the height of the outbreak. His wife and two adult daughters, two adult daughters, stayed home in in Warwickshire countryside. Okay, so he didn't have childcare responsibilities. Hmm. Could it be because his children were adults at that time? His children were adults. It says right here. What the heck? What is wrong with these people? Oh my. You just totally blew a hole in your argument. <laughs> Newton never married and had children. <laughs> he sailed the Great Plague of 1665 and 1666 on his family estate in East England and spent most of his adult life as a fellow at Cambridge University where his meals and housekeeping were provided by the college. Okay, so. Oh my goodness, he didn't have to prepare his own meals or clean up after himself. That evil patriarchal bastard. How dare he? This is, this is just unconscionable. He had housekeeping? Well, yeah, if it was paid for, wouldn't you take advantage of it? No matter what your gender? Doesn't it doesn't matter what you can anybody can take advantage of housekeeping. <sighs> For those with caring responsibilities, an infectious disease outbreak is unlikely to give them time to write King Lear. Y yeah, y you're right, or develop a theory of optics. Uh huh. A pandemic magnifies all existing inequities. Oh oh, sorry in inequalities. Oh does it? Okay okay. Well, I've done videos on this. You can find them on my channel where I point out how men 
have the short end of the stick in modern Western society. Women have more rights than men do, and men have more responsibilities than women do. Women don't get drafted. Men have to get drafted. Well, if there's a draft. Women have bodily integrity. They have laws enforced against chopping off parts of their body. Men don't have those laws. Well, women cannot rape men. Men can rape women, but men, women cannot rape men. That wouldn't be something that I would, I would bring up even. Except, so many things can be called rape today. It's not like forcing, actually forcing sex on somebody is the only thing that's called rape today. Like, almost everything is being considered rape anymore. And women are crying that there's not more stuff being called rape. So, yeah, uh, let's see if that's true with this outbreak, if, if women have it better than men, because women already have it better than men. If men have it so much better economically, then why don't the tables just suddenly flip, right? If it's legal to pay women less, why, are, why do any men have jobs? Men should not have a single job. There should not be a single man who has a job at a company in this country, unless maybe he's working for his family, because... It's legal to pay women less. You, just, you can just pay them less. So you know, hey, I, I got a bottom line to think about. I got, you know, I got myself to think about. I got, I got my my, my own mouse to feed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna only gonna hire women. So, where were we? Even as politicians insist, this is not the time to talk about anything other than the immediate crisis. Now I haven't been following. Do you not have an editor? The period goes inside, inside, the parentheses. The, I don't know, I haven't been watching the, the politicians, but I haven't heard anybody say, well, we can't talk about women's issues. In, in, besides which, we don't need to be talking about women's issues. We've handled women's issues. We need to talk about men's issues. Working from home in a white-collar job is easier. Employees with salaries and benefits will be better protected. Okay, so women have salaries and, and benefits. Self-isolation is less taxing in a spacious house than a cramped apartment. I live in an apartment, so what, what's your point? I live in a cramped apartment. Right? I don't, I don't know what, what her point is there. But one of the most striking effects of the coronavirus will be to send many couples back to the 1950s. Oh, she's just pointing out all the difficulties. I see. Across the world, women's independence will be a silent victim of the pandemic. Women do not need independence. What they need is to be a good partner to men and let men do all the heavy lifting. I mean seriously, I'd rather I would rather have somebody take care of me. Why do you want to go out and work? Why do you want to be out there dealing with the stresses and the difficulties of daily life when you can be at home? And yeah, okay, there's a certain sense of freedom to go, look, I don't need you. I can leave and I can be okay because I'll ha I have a job. But there's this thing called alimony that still exists and men still have to pay the lion's share of alimony and women still initiate the lion's share of divorce. So this is not a fair system. We've t I've talked about this before. Okay, purely in a physical illness, the coronavirus appears to affect women less severely. Yes, this is true with nearly all diseases because men have a weaker immune system than women do. So more men are going to die from the coronavirus. More men are going to die from pretty much every outbreak. These people, I don't understand their stupidity. You know, the earth could explode tomorrow and the headline would read, Earth explodes, women most affected. Really? <sighs> diseases affect women less severely, generally speaking. So how are you saying that this is a burden on women. Men are the ones who are suffering permanent lung damage more often and dying more often from this disease. But in the past few days, the, the conversation about the pandemic has broadened. We are not just living through a public health crisis, but an economic one. As much of normal life is suspended for three months or more, job losses are inevitable. At the same time, school closures and household isolation are moving the work of caring for children from paid economy, nurseries, schools, babysitters, to the unpaid one. It should be that way. Why do you want to outsource your child care? Why do you have children if you want to send them off to someone else to have that someone else raise them? 
really I don't understand that was the the joys of parenthood I don't want to see my children you just want to have some prodigy for you some some legacy to carry on your name <sighs> in the Middle Ages women worked women worked in the fields in, in peasant life it's common younger girls were the babysitters of their children while they were in the fields it was a necessary evil they women generally had to work to support the family that they, they couldn't they there wasn't a high enough production out of one person working out of out of just them the husband working so this is nothing new that women have had to go out and help support the family financially this has gone on forever literally forever that the majority of women have had to go out and earn money usually on the side usually less so than the man and a lot of times this is what women want women want to do this they don't want to work full-time they don't want to be the breadwinner not always the case but a lot of times that is, that is the case I mean these are adults they can make decisions for themselves they can go you know what honey why don't you go to work I want to work part-time I'm gonna work from home selling Avon or whatever you know the direct market sales is what that was so you can go around and ask people hey you want to buy this and it's okay to do that there's nothing at all wrong to have a setup to have it set up that way okay the coronavirus smashes up the bargain that so many dual earner couples have made in the developed world we can both work because someone else is looking after our children instead couples will have to decide which one of them takes the hit not necessarily they don't necessarily have to decide on this it might be thrust upon them by the economics changing I mean if, if you're a stewardess well airlines are basically shut down now what, what are you gonna do if you're a nurse so let's say you're a female nurse and your husband is the manager of a restaurant there's no choice there you're going to work if you're the nurse and if you're the manager of a restaurant guess what the restaurants here in California have been um, limited to takeout only and a lot of restaurants are not set up for takeout so they just closed many stories of arrogance are related to this pandemic among the most exasperating is the West's failure to learn from history the Ebola crisis in three African countries the Zika from 2015 to 2016 the recent outbreaks of SARS swine flu and the bird flu <sighs> academics who study these episodes found that they had deep long-lasting effects on gender equality really okay let's see your proof I'm gonna need the citations on this everybody's income was affected by the Ebola outbreak in West Africa Julia Smith a health policy researcher at Simon Fraser University told New York Times this month but men's income returned to what they had made pre-outbreak faster than women's income okay so why 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 did that happen is it because of workplace inequality where we watch we gotta get dick in here we gotta get that dick yeah bring that dick in we gotta have it here no there's lots of other reasons why this could be the case why don't we think of some hmm maybe the type of work that was required after the outbreak ended was more favorable to men more jobs you know opened up for men because men are more susceptible to disease huh maybe that got men back on their feet faster maybe women didn't get back up to their their pre earnings is because hey they had a taste of not working for a while and said yeah this is a better deal I like this maybe the women got pregnant somebody has to take care of the children I'm not saying that it has to be the woman but somebody has to and typically women are the ones who are going to do that because they are designed to, they're physically designed to take care of children okay there are other reasons too we can think of so some type of work we thought of maybe men being the ones that are more affected by this um, maybe women chose not to go back to work um, you know women tend to work in in luxury type positions quite frequently florists perfume sales makeup sales cosmetology these are more luxury type situations 
women work in, in, in the service industry, so they work in restaurants more often. I used to be a waiter. Most of the, the service, the serve staff, the server staff was waitresses. Um, so women work in these, these unessential job roles, whereas, hmm, gee, men work in things like sewage, trash collection, construction, military. Uh, they are more likely to be doctors. Women are more likely to be nurses. So kind of, you know, there's a trade-off there. But So these more essential jobs, you're dealing with coming out of a disaster you might not be you might not get schools up and running right away after the after the outbreak well there's more women that work in education than men who work in education so there's lots of other factors we could look at it's not just oh we want to keep women down keep them in their place make them stay home or maybe like i said women are maybe choosing maybe maybe women are the ones who are choosing to go hey you know what i'm going to stay home and care for my mom and dad or i'm going to stay home and care for the children and again, like it, it goes back to the jobs. Maybe the jobs that were available, it's like hey, we're both unemployed. One of us is going to get a job. Hey, I got offered this job over here doing, doing you know, this really backbreaking labor. Do you want to take it, honey? And the woman's like, no, I don't want to do that. Well, I'm going to take it. Well, you got offered a job. How much does it pay? The backbreaking labor probably pays more than whatever the woman was being offered. So there's lots of other factors. It's not about keeping women out of economics and even if it was so what like I stated at the beginning stay home in the damn kitchen where you belong I'm tired of hearing this argument that that women don't belong in the kitchen and yeah they don't belong there but who is more equipped for that role that's just how it is you can like it or not like it I don't care women are better equipped to stay home and care for a family than men are studies have been done on this men men's health is impacted negatively when they're stay-at-home dads. Whereas women's health is not. So, yeah. You don't need to be taking money out of my pocket because you'll work for less. This is what happened in, in the 1950s and 60s when women started really flooding into the workforce. Is guess what? They said, well, I'll work for less. So that depressed all wages for men and women. Thanks a lot, girls. Yay, just so you can feel independent and you're a strong woman who don't need no man. Good job. Bravo. Okay. The distorting effects of an epidemic can last four years. Claire Winham, an assistant professor of global health policy at London School of Economics, told me. We also saw declining rates of a childhood vaccination during Ebola. Later, when these children contracted preventable diseases, their mothers had to take time off work. Why? Why was it their mothers? Why was it their mothers who had to take time off work? Why didn't the fathers take time off work? Oh, I know why. I know why. Because the mothers have divorced the fathers and taken child, child custody away from the fathers, or they don't even know who the father is in the first place. We see this happening all over the world now. Women just getting pregnant willy-nilly because there's no more stigma around women getting pregnant and having children out of wedlock. There's no more stigma around women having babies and then, oh, I don't know who the father is. Could be any one of these guys, or I don't even, you know, I don't even get his name. He's some guy I randomly met. So that's why these women have to take time off work because they are the only parent. It's not because there's a two-parent household and it's like, oh, we chose for the women to take time off work. And and it, even if there is a two-parent two-parent household. The women can make decisions for themselves. They can go, hey, I want to take this time off. Why don't you why don't you stay at work? <sighs> at an individual level, the choices of many couples over the next few months will make perfect economic sense. What do pandemic parents need? Looking after. What do self-isolating older people need? Looking after. What do children kept home from school need? Looking after. All this looking after, this unpaid caring labor, will fall more heavily on women because of the existing structure of the workforce. There is no existing structure in the workforce. It's not just about social norms of women performing care roles. It's also about practicalities. When Ham added, who is paid less? Who has the flexibility? Women are not paid less unless they choose to be paid less because if they were paid less, then no men would have jobs. We just talked about this. Women are paid less because they choose less rewarding jobs, jobs that pay less. 
They choose jobs that pay less. They choose to work part-time. If I could work part-time and send my wife to work full-time, oh, believe me, I would in a second. I wouldn't even think about it, and I'm a man, and I feel that way. Now, a lot of men don't feel that way. A lot of men would be like, no, I want to work. I want to I have the job, blah, 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 etc. But I would rather just sit at home most of the time and not have to go to work. According to the British government's figures, 40% of employed women work part-time. There you go, 40% of women work part-time. Why? Whose choice is it to work part-time? Is it the job market going, we can't, we can't give you full-time work? If that were the case, if, we, if the jobs could only support so many people working full-time, it says right here, 13% of the part-time workers are men, 40% are women. If it was just based on the ability of the market to, to supply jobs, then wouldn't it be an even split? Wouldn't it be like a 26% by 27% split? Maybe 26% of men, 27% of women? But no, it's not, it's not like that. In heterosexual relationships, women are more likely to be the lower earners. Women are more likely to, to earn less than men because that's what they choose. Meaning their jobs are considered a lower priority when disruptions come along. And this particular disruption could last months rather than weeks. Some women's lifetime earnings will never recover. Some men's lifetime earnings will never recover. What, what about the men? I hear you complain, oh, the poor women, so many think of them. What about the men? Men are not going to recover from this too, just depending on what their job is. My brother's a jeweler. His job could go away entirely. He could never recover from this. He could never recover from this. Because who needs, who's thinking about buying jewels in a time like this? And not only that, 90% of his business is online. Well, on non essential shipping is, is coming to a halt. If the school's closed, many fathers will undoubtedly step up, but that won't be universal. Despite the mass, it's not going to be universal for women to step up either. Many women are going to stay top earners in their family and let the men do the work. Despite the mass entry of women into the workforce during the 20th century, the phenomenon of the second shift still exists. Across the world, women, including those with jobs, do more housework and have less leisure time than their male partners. <laughs> Even memes about panic buying acknowledge that household tasks such as Food shopping are primarily shouldered by women. This is by choice. Again, like I don't do as much housework as my wife because I'm more likely to let things go a little bit longer than her. I haven't vacuumed in you know three weeks. She'd be like, "Oh my god, you haven't vacuumed in three weeks? What the hell's wrong with you?" She's gonna do it. She'll she'll vacuum every week, twice a week, even. Not because not because she is required to do that, but that's what she wants to do. She wants it to be cleaner than I do. I'm like, eh, it's three, four weeks, whatever. It's fine. <sighs> I'm not afraid of COVID-19, but what is scary is the lack of common sense people have. Reads one of the most popular tweets about the coronavirus. Oh, okay, how does that tie into what you were talking about here? Because you are definitely not making sense. I'm scared for people who actually need to go to the store and feed their fams, but Susan and Karen stocked up for 30 years. The joke only works because Susan and Karen, stand in names for suburban moms, are understood to be responsible for household management, rather than say Mike and Steve. Okay, that was not a funny joke. It doesn't work. <laughs> Some people literally are stocking up for 30 years or at least working towards that. And it wouldn't matter if it was Mike and Karen or Steve and Susan or Mike and Steve or John and Joe or whoever. It's not a good joke. It's stupid. And it doesn't work. So just... look around and you can see couples already making tough decisions on how to divide up this extra unpaid labor. When I call Winham, she was self-isolating with two small children. She and her husband were alternating between two-hour shifts of childcare and paid work. That is one solution. For others, the division will run along older lines. Dual-income couples might suddenly find themselves living like their grandparents, one homemaker and one breadwinner. 
My spouse is a physician in the emergency department and is actively treating hashtag really coronavirus patients. We just made the difficult decision for him to isolate and move into our garage apartment for the foreseeable future as he continues to treat patients, wrote the Emory University epidemiologist Rachel Patzer, who has a three-week-old baby and two young children. As I attempt to homeschool my kids alone with a new baby who screams if she isn't held, I am worried about the health of my spouse and my family. I work in education. This, this woman is working in education. Yeah, I'm staying home and I'm working. Okay, her husband doesn't have a, as much of a luxury to do that. And you don't want to bring sick people into your house with three young children. Well, this is such a, a bogus example. What the hell is wrong? These people. These people here are living in the lap of luxury. One is a physician and the other one is an epidemiologist at a university who's homeschooling her children. And you guys are complaining about, oh, so I have to take care of the kids. I have to I have to teach them in between working my job from home. Well, my husband, who, I mean, practically has to work his job in isolation so that the kids don't get sick. It's so unfair. Yeah, and I wish I were six feet tall, too. Single parents face even harder decision. While schools are closed, how do they juggle earning and caring? Stay married. Don't have children out of wedlock. Don't have children when you don't know who the father is. Most single parents, most single parents are, if you guessed women, you win the prize. What the hell? Why is this such a... We, we, we've been saying this for years. You don't have kids out of wedlock. Don't go around willy-nilly having sex with strangers. Be responsible over your body and who you have sex with. But, you know, you don't go around just popping out babies because you can. You know, there's lots of things you can do that you shouldn't do. One of them is popping out babies when you're not married to a stable, good man. Okay? You don't even have to have sex until you're married to a stable, good man. Let me see. While schools are closed, how do they juggle earnings and caring? No one should be nostalgic for the 1950s ideal of dad returning to freshly baked dinner and freshly washed children when so many families were excluded from it even then. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Just because it wasn't commonplace in the 1950s, or as commonplace as we are led to believe, doesn't mean that people shouldn't, shouldn't want to have that. And in Britain today, a quarter of families are headed by a single parent, right, again, because women are not being responsible with who they have babies with, more than 90% of whom are women. Like I said, women are not being responsible with who they make babies with. Stop making babies until you find a good, stable man. Why is this a hard concept to understand? Why is it a hard concept to go, you know what, it's really going to be difficult for me to raise a child and have a job that supports me and the child. I don't understand how that's a difficult thing to understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, closed schools make their lives harder. Imagine that. Other lessons from the Ebola epidemic were just as stark and similar, if perhaps smaller. Effects will be seen during this crisis in the developed world. School closures affected girls' life chances. Not boys' life chances, though. It never affected boys' life chances. Never, never once. Boys have the same amount of chance as girls do when schools close and when schools are open because many dropped out of education what about men when men can drop out of education <laughs> hey look there's a rise in teen pregnancy when that happens <sighs> who's in charge of whether or not I have sex hmm? you tell me who is it is it oh it's it's if you guessed women again you win the prize men want to have sex that's the way we're made. We want to have sex. Who decides whether or not we get to have sex? It's not like I can go out and say, "Hey, look, you know, you're you're attractive. You and me, we're gonna we're gonna be dating now, okay?" No, it's primarily up to the woman. Ninety percent of in, of sexual interactions are because a woman said, uh, "Okay," to a man's advances. It's not the other way around. Sometimes it's the other way around. Men sometimes have to say, "Yeah, okay, you're 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 somebody I would 
it would like to do that with. Usually, though, when a man has to to interact with a woman that way, it's it's them him turning her down because if a woman is desperate, it mean, usually means she's not very physically attractive. So let's see here. Domestic and sexual violence rose. <gasps> you know what could curtail a lot of that? Women choose nice, stable men. It's not... And men do the same thing. Men choose nice, stable women. Don't drink. I, I chose... One of the reasons I chose my wife is because she doesn't drink. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna compete with her for her drug. I don't, I don't wanna... I don't wanna have her go, well, I wanna give my attention to my husband, but right now I'm feeling like I wanna drink instead. I don't want. I don't want that competition. And, and not everybody who drinks can, you know, be that addicted to the to the drug. Obviously, people can can put down the drug and and focus on the relationships. But a lot of people can't. And I didn't want to run that risk that someday my wife would go like, you know what? I think I need to drink a lot more. So where were we? <sighs> yeah, there are men who, you know, there are fathers who abuse their their children. There are mothers who abuse their children. There are children who abuse their siblings. So domestic and sexual violence can go up in those areas. But if you choose a kind, stable partner, you are much less likely, much less likely to have assault happen to you or your children. And who's in charge of choosing? Hmm? Who's in charge of choosing? We've gone over this. If you said women, you win the prize. That's right. Women. Women are in charge of who they get married to. Men are the ones who are asking. Men are the ones who got to get down on one knee and go, hey, will you marry me? And the women can say, no, get out of my face. Men aren't the ones who are going like, oh, yeah, she, you, I, I, you, you can marry me. Sure. Yeah. You're hot enough. You can marry me. Yeah, sure. It does happen that way. But mostly it's the women choosing who, who gets married and who doesn't get married. <laughs> Women have all this social power, and they say, "Oh, I don't, I don't have any power." You know, it's all men. Men have all the economic and, and political power. Therefore, they're they're the ones who are in charge, and that's going away. So, even though men had a little bit of power there, that kind of helped equal out the the situation between men and women. That's starting to go away as women gain more political positions and are more likely to become CEOs. So, men are going to be losing all their power, and we're seeing this happen in our civilization with MIGTO. And then just checking out and going, hey, look, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. You, you don't want to value me as a human being? I have, I have no way of gaining value as a human being because, I mean, for example, in my, my work, the president and the head of education are females. They're women. They make way more money than I do. <laughs> way more. So, you know, they're my bosses and they make more money than I do. More women died in childbirth because resources were diverted elsewhere. Yes. Don't get pregnant. There is a distortion of health systems. Everything goes towards the outbreaks, said Winham, who traveled to West Africa as the research during the Ebola crisis. Things that aren't priorities get canceled. That can have an effect on maternal mortality or access to contraception. Okay, easy solution to this. That doesn't affect access to contraception at all. Because you know what the number one way of keeping from getting pregnant is? Don't have sex. And I'm not one of those abstinence-only people. I mean, I understand there's other forms of birth control, and that you should probably use them. But hey, if you think that maybe things are going to be bad for you during a, like, you know, the aftermath of a crisis or during, during the outbreak, maybe you don't have sex so you don't get pregnant, so, you know, you don't have babies. Just, just throwing that out there as an option to you. Maybe, maybe think about like, mm, yeah, we don't have any, we don't have any prophylactics. Maybe we don't have sex today. Maybe we do it a different way. You know, got some other options for us. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that up to your imagination. What I'm talking about there. So yeah, the United States already has appalling statistics in this area compared with other rich countries. And black women there are twice as likely to die in childbirth as white women are. We had to play the race card, too, of course. Maybe if um, black women chose nice, stable men. Maybe if black women chose, you know, I don't know. Maybe they should choose white boyfriends and husbands. Eh, just 
just a thought. Just saying, maybe maybe that's a better option for him. I don't know. I, mean, I honestly don't know. I'm just just tossing that out there as an idea. Have fun with it. Run with it. For Winham, the most striking statistic from Sierra Leone, one of the country's worst affected by Ebola, was that from 2013 to 2016, during the outbreak, more women died of obstetric complications than the infectious disease itself. But these deaths, like the unnoticed caring labor on which the modern economy runs, attract less attention than the immediate problems generated by an epidemic. Okay, more people are dying in car accidents still than the coronavirus. We can throw statistics around like that all day long. Doesn't mean that the outbreak isn't an important factor that we need to talk about and think about. These deaths are taken for granted. In her book, Invisible Women, Caroline whatever notes that 29 million papers were published in more than 15,000 peer-reviewed titles around the time of Zika and Ebola epidemics, but less than 1% explored the gendered impact of the outbreaks. Okay, so what the hell does that have to do with anything? I, I There's 29 million papers that were written, and only, only 1% of them, or less than 1% of them, talked about gendered impacts of the outbreaks. But you know why? You know why that is? Because it's not that important. And if we did delve into this, you know what you're going to find out? Men suffer more so than women do with these things. Because the truth is men suffer more so with anything negative than women do. It's my understanding that, that rape even affects men more so than, than women negatively. If you include the prison population in rape statistics. So, you know, all these negative things that women think are happening to only to them. Oh, it's only happening to me. Eh. <sighs> no. It happens to men, too. It happens worse to men. It was brilliant when, when that woman asked, like, the feminists got up and they asked the, the um, actors of Game of Thrones, what are all the terrible things that they put women through in the show? And the women were like, they put men through terrible things, too. Yeah, terrible things happen to both men and women. And more so to men than to women. We, we, we protect women. We keep them safe. Women and children first. You know, women and children first. That is the thing. We save the women and children first. This has been going on forever. The way that you populate humanity is with women. You don't need men to populate humanity, so we protect women. It's built into our genes. To go, we, we need to protect the women because, hey, if we run out of women, if we run out of women, your civilization is done if you run out of women. If you run out of men, well, I mean, you need a few. It's like we can we got a lot bigger cushion there. Like if you got 100 women and 100 men and suddenly your male population drops down to 10 and you still have 100 women, you're going to be okay. Other way around though, you're going to have serious problems. If you only had 10 women to 100 men, there's going to be a lot of blood on the hands of those men. No gender analysis of the coronavirus outbreak so far. No kidding, it's brand new. She, <laughs> she and two co-authors have stepped up step into the gap to research the issue. Oh man, it's brand new. We haven't we haven't had enough time to really see a big impact between the genders. Yeah, and, and even even if there is a noticeable impact, it's it's not going to be huge. A noticeable difference between between how it affects the genders, it's not going to be a huge difference. It's not going to be like, "Oh my gosh, women are just they're wrecked. They're never women this is like, yep, we've gone back to the way things were." a hundred years ago and women pretty much they either work part-time or they stay home very few of them work full-time and uh, the men go out and earn all the money oh so terrible and even that's not so bad why is that such a bad thing <sighs> the evidence we do have from the Ebola and Zika outbreak should inform the current response in both rich and poor countries campaigners expect domestic violence rates to rise during lockdown do you think so living inside of a small building with the same, only seeing the same people over and over and over again, yeah. Stress, alcohol, their alcohol consumption, I told you, don't, don't, don't consume alcohol. Stop now if you do. Don't buy any more. Just stop entirely for the rest of your life and you'll be fine. And financial difficulties, yeah, financial difficulties are going to be, going to be a problem. They're going to trigger violence. The quarantine measures being imposed around the world will increase all three. Yes, it will. The British charity Women's Aid said in a statement that, it, it, notice how up here, by the way, I was talking about these these um, domestic violence. 
they don't say anything about which gender is going to be committing the most violence. You're just supposed to know it's men. It's men who do who do all the domestic violence, not women. Women women don't don't commit any, any acts of domestic violence. They're just the poor victims of domestic violence, which isn't true. You know, it's, a, it's almost a 50-50 split. Something like 45, 55%. 45% of domestic violence is committed by women. 55% is committed by men. The British Charity Women's Aid said in a statement that it was concerned that social distancing and social isolation will be used as a tool of coercive and controlling behavior by perpetrators and will shut down routes of safety and support. Yes, for men too. Men, men can be victims of domestic violence. Men can be the victims of coercion and all that stuff. Researchers, including those I spoke with, are frustrated that findings like this have not made it through to policymakers. That no, they have. There's there's no reason to believe that that women are more affected by any of this. Who still adopt a gender neutral approach? Yes, exactly. There is a it's gender neutral. Um, they also worry that opportunities to collect high quality data which will be useful for future for the future are being missed. For example, we have little information on how viruses similar to the coronavirus affect pregnant women, right? Because this COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus. Hence the conflicting advice during the current crisis, or according to Susan Hares, sufficient data to build a model for when schools should... Re what? That, that, that's a non sequitur. Pregnant women to, oh, we don't know when school should open. But get an editor. Jeez, this woman is terrible. We shouldn't make this mistake again, grim as it is to imagine now. Further epidemics are inevitable, and the temptation to argue that gender is a side issue, yes, it is. A distraction from the real crisis must be resisted. No, it's a distraction from the real crisis. What we do now will affect the lives of millions of women and girls in future outbreaks. What about the men? What about the poor men? Why, why do you assume that we're just we're we're just attacking this from a male centric point of view? We're not. This is a neutral point of view. It's affecting people. It's not affecting one gender more than the other. It might be affecting men more than it's affecting women because we've seen that and that it kills more men. It affects men more harshly. The coronavirus crisis will be global and loss and long lasting. I don't want my neighbors to have to like pound on the walls like they're trying to break through them economic as well as medical what their problem is over there however it also offers an opportunity this could be the first outbreak where gender and sex differences are recorded and taken into account by researchers and policymakers for too long politicians have assumed that child care, care and elderly care can be hooked up by private citizens mostly women effectively providing a huge subsidy to the paid economy to the paid economy this pandemic should remind us of the future scale of that distortion if if women do that again they make their own choices men make choices it's whatever winham supports emergency child care provision economic security for small business owners and a financial stimulus paid directly to families but she isn't hopeful because her experience suggests that governments are too short-termist and reactive. Everything that's happened has been predicted right, she told me as she actually asked you. So it's right here. As a collective academic group, we knew there would be an outbreak that came out of China that shows you how globalization spreads disease that's going to paralyze financial system systems and there was no pot of money ready to go no governance plan we knew all this and they didn't listen so why would they listen to something about women okay they don't need to listen to something about women it, 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 yeah if it truly does have like some sort of disastrous effect on women yes okay we need to we need to worry about that if it's just that they can't go into the workforce in the numbers that they once could okay too freaking bad Marry a good man, a good stable man, and you'll be fine. And same thing with men. If men can't get into the workforce, fine. Marry a good stable woman <clears throat> who's economically stable. You'll be fine. This whole globalization that you're complaining about right here, yeah, guess whose idea that was? Again, if you said women, you win the prize. Who are the majority of voters? Women. 
So what are the politicians doing being voted in by women and they're allowing this globalization to happen? So again, you know, it's you can point the finger at women all day long. And I'm not trying to do that, but that's just the reality that we live in. You know, women have a very important role to play in our society and it's it is the parents to our children. They don't need to worry about being like, I want to be a breadwinner. I want to make money. Rah, 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 all that stuff. No, you don't need to worry about that. You should be the social stability that we have in our society. The men are the ones out there taming the beast while you're going, yeah, um, I got to tame you, honey, because you'll come home and be a beast. So you need to come home and be calm down and we need to have these social ties, these social interactions, so that you know you can't get out of hand. Because men are aggressive, men are violent. It, it, it they become less so as they get older. If you hit about 35, there's a huge drop off about then. But there still is that aggression in men, and there still is that angry, that angry outburst, that anger, just bubbling under the surface, ready to go. And a lot of men, not all men, but a lot of men have that problem. So this whole article is just another one of those stupid pandering things like, oh, look, we know so much because we're women. It's just been the case that, that, that men have just ruled the world and it's wrong. They shouldn't do that. They just, they just shouldn't do that. It's so wrong. And the fact of the matter is women rule the world. Women have been, been given every opportunity. Women have taken so many opportunities and run with them. And then they sit back and point the finger and go, men are the problem. Men, it's evil men. They're so bad. They don't, you don't even know. It's like, no, both men and women can be evil. Both men, men and women can do good and do bad. It's, it's whatever. As far as that's concerned, there's, there's no monopoly on which gender can do bad things. It just so happens that pandemics don't really affect women more so than men. Yeah, you see these uh, these so-called missed opportunities by women because the pandemic has had negative impacts on their lives. Well, that happens to men too. The difference is this. Men have to go out and prove that they are worthy of love, whereas women are given love no matter what. So men will go out even after a pandemic and go, i got to prove myself. I still have to prove myself. I still have to do this work. I still have to do this. I still have to do that. Because women can just lay back and go... I don't feel like doing it in a man will be like, I love you anyway. So yeah, sick and tired of these stupid feminazis and their garbage, but people eat, lap it up. There's so many people who just love this stuff. I'm not one of them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.